All right, now on the Our Lads Football Network, it's uh, probably uh, taken us a little bit longer than I would have liked uh, to talk fantasy football on our show, but better time, uh, what is it, uh, better late? Better than, late than never? Never, yeah, that works. So Jared Smola, of course, if you know the channel well, especially if you're a golf fan, uh, you know Jared, you know we've been talking and teasing about getting into the fantasy football uh, portion of our channel. Uh, we are going to be talking during the football season. Uh, we'll have on multiple guests. I mean, Jared will probably come on once a month. I know Matt will come on. Maybe I'll even be able to hook up with some of the owners in our league, especially three of the, let's say, Theo. I mean, I've already interviewed one of them. So, you know, I'd like to get Theo on, by the way, definitely. Uh, yeah, is that Theo's possible? Is really... Theo a talker or is he uh, like one of those guys yes, that he, – uh... Yeah, he 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 podcasts. He's with um, a player profiler, I believe. So, he, and he's a super sharp guy. He'd be, he'd be a good guest for sure. Yeah. So those are the interviews we're gonna have during the season, and uh, we will be talking about our dynasty league that we just put together uh, last month. Uh, we just ended the draft last week, so we'll talk all about that. But uh, to kind of get things going, what I wanted to do is is kind of talk about draft sharks as. A novice like I am, kind of. I mean, it's still, I've used um, the website and a lot of the tools since last year, since Draft Sharks and Our Lads became partners, and they really became good partners just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they upped the partnership, which is really great, and uh, which is why these this particular video is probably a little later than we would have liked. There was still a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we had to fix and make sure everybody was on the same page. And now we are. And we're looking forward to a great relationship in year two. Um, but anyway, I haven't used a lot of these tools, as Jared knows. I was going to use the, the, the war room, the draft room for uh, our dynasty draft. But I just felt it would be better if I learned how to use these tools, like if I was doing it for the first time. And this would be a perfect opportun uh, opportunity to do that right here on, on a video like this. Uh, this is basically a tutorial. Half of this video would be like a tutorial. Uh, like if anybody out there is watching and doing it for the first time, just like me. So I'm going to let Jared, well, Jared and I are going to kind of do this together, but I'm going to pop it up here on the screen right now. So there you go. This is the, uh, we're looking at the, is this like the homepage at Draft Sharks? This is the, this is the homepage if you're logged in. Yep. If you're so logged at the top in. here, okay. you'll see, I mean, you know, that's, that's the dynasty league you're seeing right there. And then if you had, you know, 10 leagues, they'd all kind of be up there at the top for you to access uh, okay. you know, right, right off the bat on the homepage. Now, syncing, that's like one of the first things you want to do before you get into a draft. Yep. So so in order to do that, um, what does the what does the average person do? Yeah. So if you were going to add a new league, you would click that add a, the big add add a league button right there. With the plus sign okay. Just click that. Yep. So this one. Pretty simple. Yep. Add a league. Just click that. Yep, and then that, that option on the left there is where you'd sync your league. And if you actually click that, and there is an option, too, to set up manually, which means, you know, you're just putting in your scoring system and all your rules manually. Sync your league does what you want to do, if at all possible. So if you click that, um, these are all the commissioning platforms we sync with. So it's okay. pretty much everything. I mean, I would just assume this covers like 98% of people. Um, so this is super simple, and we don't even have to do it. But if you were in an ESPN league, you would just click ESPN. Make sure you're logged in to your ESPN account before you go to do this. If you are and you click ESPN, DraftSharks is going to find your ESPN league. It'll pop up. You click your league and it's going to sync. It's And when, when we say sync, it's pulling in all your league settings. So the scoring system, the starting requirements, all of that. Um, well, if you've already... I have a league at uh, CBS Sportsline and, and we're going to draft on then. Sunday. Let's do it. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to click CBS. And if you're logged into CBS... Uh, I should be. I usually yep. am. Yep, there, there it is. It is. is that it? So okay. click that. So I click my league, which I'm a four times. Five champ, seconds. By the way. Beautiful. You might, that's why you I'm. Might not that's, need why I'm this, that's why I've graduated with the big boys now. You might not even need this. <laughs> all right. So. Okay. So this is all. Yeah, it's, all pulling, it's just basically okay. So sync is complete. and everything. Yeah. So. Um, I always recommend doing the check scoring first. Ju like the, the sync is 99% accurate okay. as far as pulling in the right settings. But I always recommend just doing check scoring first. So click that. 
that's going to bring you to the leak settings page on draft sharks okay this should all be correct now this is this right you don't you have zero required starting wideouts or is that not right this looks like a bit of a funky leak oh it is okay. yeah we have okay. some really I mean, funky cool rules that okay yeah make it fun yeah okay i see so you have four spots that can be a wide receiver or a tight end is that right correct okay yeah so that so this looks good to me um, so you can scroll scroll down to the bottom you get also you know this is so this is the second part is the scoring system uh, okay. uh, it's pulling in all those rules so then scroll to the very bottom and go save and go to draft war room yep and this is the drafting tool so what you're seeing here is man this is a funky league josh allen's coming up so these rank these rankings are customized to your league rules it's factoring in your scoring system it's factoring in how many you know players you start at each position it's factoring in ADP. It's factoring in there's set there's 17 factors we use when we're coming up with these rankings. Um, and the, the other, I mean, the coolest thing about this too is now when you go to draft on CBS, these players are going to come off the rankings automatically as they're drafted. So you don't have to worry about clicking guys off, crossing guys off a sheet. Like it's going to do all that updating for you. The one thing to know is you still need to make the actual pick on CBS. You can't you can't make your draft pick from draft sharks. You use this for your rankings. When, when you're on the when you, you know when it's your turn to pick, have the draft war room open. Look at you know the two or three guys at the top. You're probably in most cases going to want to pick uh, you know one of the top two or three guys, and you'd go over to the CBS uh, draft room and, and make your selection. Okay. Now, to show everybody, how, is it necessary for me to go to the league, my league right now, and show them what it would look like, or they, that's not really necessary? I don't think so. the only cool thing is if you if you could get into your draft room now on CBS. I don't even yeah. know if that's possible. If you can, oh, though, into the draft also, room. Yeah, Let me see. you might be able to, even though the draft hasn't started yet. Because um, there because there's also a draft war room sidebar that'll show up right in CBS. That's going to like show you the top five available players at all all times. All right, let me see here. All right, so what I'll do is. And then while you're working on that too, I'll just talk more about what you see well, on here's this page. The... So, oh, cool. Yep. So there, there's the sidebar. Um, yep. There it is. Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. not. So if you if you didn't want to be switching screens back and forth between DraftSharks and CBS, you could just use this sidebar, which will constantly update throughout the draft, just like the draft war. And then I does. can just hit this button, and then that that gets rid of it. That's yep. it. I mean, so I, I recommend using the full draft war room just because there's more functionality on it. But if, you know, if you're not someone that likes flipping back and forth between pages, you could just use the, the sidebar. Okay. All right. That's pretty cool. Um, yes, yeah, so, so if you want to go back to the okay. draft war room, the full, full one, um, just so we can talk about all the stuff that's on here. I mean, there's a ton of information that, that's right there for you. Obviously, by week, ADP, the column that is c-o-n-s that's that's consensus ranking so we pull in uh you know projections from like 20 other fantasy sites and average those just to okay. kind of give you an idea of what what everyone else is saying about a guy and then the p-r-o-j column that's projection that's our baseline projection for that player for your scoring system so you know we project josh allen to score 433 fantasy points in this league based this on their rules right Yep, based on your scoring rules and our projections. That's the baseline projection. We also show you a ceiling projection, which is like, you know, if everything goes right for this guy, we think Allen could score 446. And then we also show a floor projection. If things go wrong, barring like season end and injury, obviously. I mean, Allen could score zero points if he gets hurt on the first snap of the season. But if he stays healthy and things go wrong, that's kind of what we think his, his floor is as far as, far as fantasy points. So... What would the CBS, so CBS and I'm sure all these other uh, sites, they have their own yep. system. So it's basically you're, you're, you're even able to kind of find out what they're, how they're mm -hmm. ranking because that's, they all do the same thing. Do they also project based yeah, they, on your rules and so forth and then um, spit out see, their rankings? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I know CBS has projections. I'm not sure if in your, you know, in your league, if it would show the projections customized to your scoring system, or if it's just kind of like their their um, you know default projections. I'm really not sure. Um, 
But obviously, like having rankings that are customized to your league scoring system is huge. Um, I think people underrate how much scoring system matters and how much that can change player values. So, you know, that's why um, you know we're we strongly believe in you know doing player projections and, and using those to, to fuel the rankings so that so that they can be customized to your league scoring system. Yeah, because right now I'm just going basically to rankings and and this is just their their rankings. It has nothing to do with the individual league that I'm in. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So and I'm not sure I see anything that says that it will sync or that it'll tell me customize them. Yeah, right. that'll customize it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably doesn't. So I mean yeah. it's, it's it's a big advantage to have, yeah. you know, customized rankings. There you um, go. The, the, just the last column I want to point out, and it's, it's, you know, I probably shouldn't have saved it for last because it's like the most important column on the draft war room. Um, I think it's, yeah, that one, right? Yep. Okay. Um, it's the, it's the DMVP column, which is the one that's highlighted. Um, and that's what players are ranked on. So you see Josh Allen at a hundred. This is our, you know, like proprietary algorithm we came up with to value players. Um, again, this is, this is what's based on those 17 factors that I talked about um, okay. that, that are all kind of baked into this. And basically the DMVP value is just, it's a, it's scaled from 100 to zero. So 100 is the most valuable player in your fantasy league. Zero would be the like last rostered player. So just to make it simple, if you had, you know, 10 teams and each team rostered 10 guys, that's a hundred total players. So the 100th ranked player would have a DMVP value of zero. So it's just a super quick way to like compare players, especially across positions. Okay. Um, and we use that, we use this for the draft and during the season to help with like waiver wire moves to help with the trades. Um, it's just a good, quick, simple way to, com to compare players when you're, you know, either making start sit decisions, waiver decisions or trade decisions. Okay. Yeah. Cause uh, what's interesting is, is that last year in my draft, I took Josh Allen but I was later in the draft in the first round and I was already thinking about it again, knowing my league. I was already thinking, well, I got mm -hmm. the third pick. I wonder how crazy it would be to take Josh Allen again. And now I'm looking at all uh, first time I'm looking at this and, <laughs> and basically it's telling me, go ahead, you should be drafting Josh Allen first. So, yeah, yeah. which is right, which is rare. You know, it most, is. yeah, most rankings aren't going to look like this. You know, that your, your scoring system and your league settings are obviously unique, but yeah. Yeah, that, we have a that, lot of stuff like if you uh, score a touchdown of certain yardage, we'll get yep, double points bonuses. or triple points. So yep. big play players are going to wind up being very important. And all and all that is factored in because we project, you know, lengths of touchdowns. We project how many, you know, completions of 40 plus yards Josh Allen's going to have. That's all factored in here. So, you know, the more unique the league the bigger advantage the draft war room gives you just because other people are going to be drafting off of, you know, generic rankings based yeah, on the standard yeah. scoring system. Good point. Yours obviously is not. Yeah, absolutely. So there's your so advantage cool. right there. So, yep. okay. So um, let's see. I know we also wanted to talk. Uh, well, we had the, the uh, several things. We have the trade value that we wanted to go into, but which what should we do next? Free agent uh, uh, or yeah, sure, yeah. So go, so scroll back to the top of draft shark. So you know, you know the draft forum is obviously for your draft, and then if you sync your league, there's also a bunch of tools to use in season that are going to help you. So if you if you hover over my leagues at the very top, uh, there you go. Yep, yeah. and then. Um, Let's use the Dynasty League since you already drafted that one. Um, so for now, go to – actually, you know what? Go to View All Leagues and Tools down a little bit. Yep, right there. So this is the page where you're going to see all your leagues. So now you have two. All these icons next to you know the Dynasty League are, are the in-season tools we offer. So if you wanted to check out um, the Free Agent Finder, you can click the Free Agents tab there with the helmet. Yep. Should I do it in the Dynasty one? Yeah, yeah, because you need to have your roster in there. Um, is your roster in here? Do you know? I did put okay, it together. It's yeah, it's not yet. Um, so why would it not be in here yet? Click, click, uh, click, update all rosters at the very top there. If it's synced up correctly, it should pull in all the teams. Just do mine. I mean the dynasty one. Yeah, yeah, just the dynasty one. Hopefully this pulls them in for us. So now it is. Apparently it wasn't before. Okay. So yeah, I, I st I, I'm still not. I'm still not seeing them though. Oh, it would have been on here. Yeah, they, they should be on your team there. Um, 
And if, I mean, if you want to try deleting this league and resyncing and see if that, that does it for us. Okay, so how do we do that? So go back to the All Leagues page. So to the top of the page at My Leagues and then View All Leagues and Tools. Go ahead. You can delete the Dynasty one. Click the trash can over to the right. And we can try resyncing. Hopefully that'll pull it in. So add, All right, add so, league. Yep, add a league. Yep, go through the process we just used for CBS. Sync it again. Sync it, yep. And then sleeper, which is the one we're yep. in. Yep. Okay. And this is actually, uh, if anybody has uh, problems, you're always going to encounter things oh, yeah. with any so uh, sophisticated software do you have a, a a specific remedy that hey you know what do this before you do anything try that or you know yes. check this page out issue, and we give you a list of you know yeah. if there's an issue it's usually you don't have the latest draft sharks extension installed which i believe you do i think i saw a message at the bottom of your screen that says you do but that's usually the issue the other thing is you know me and the other guys are in front of our computers for like 16 hours a day at this point of the off season. And we, and we, if you email us, we will get back to you within an hour. Um, you know, usually within like 10 to 15 minutes to cool. you know, help, help you get it set up. So, okay. Um, so what do we do now? Are yeah, we so still click, waiting? Uh, click the, nope, it's, it's, it's there. So click, okay. uh, click the dynasty league. Yep. That'll sync it. Hopefully it brings in the rosters this time. Okay. So I guess go to uh, team Intel. Can, we can check out that page first. Hopefully the rosters came in. Yes, yep. they did. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so we can talk about this page first. This is like your um, kind of your home base during the season. Okay. Um, so this Team is Intel. Show you Team Intel, yeah. Okay. Our um, week one baseline projections are already done. They're, they're ready for people. Um, I haven't got around to doing the floor and ceiling projections yet. That'll be done by Monday. Okay. Uh, but this page now is, is – this page is showing you who we'd recommend starting – for week one, the players that have a star in that starter column okay. are the guys we'd recommend starting based on our week one projections apply to, to this particular scoring system. Okay. And, and then you can see some other stuff there. You obviously see who um, the, each player is playing against in the matchup column. We again show you the consensus projection if you wanted to, you know, how see how other fantasy sites are uh, projecting these guys so um and then you also on this page see um where it says team shark bites over on the right yep that's all the player news for your team players on your team yep so quick uh, awesome quick view of that so this is like the first and then if you actually if you keep scrolling down there's nothing in there yet but there's also an injury tracker on this page so as we start to get the practice reports from teams you know starting on wednesday of this coming week um, if any of your players are on the injury report, you're going to see them right there. Okay, cool. So that's the Intel page. That's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like the home home base during the season. If you scroll back up, we can get to the free agent finder, which is okay. where we were just on. So this page, again, it's important to be synced up to your league for this page because it's going to pull in both your roster and everyone else's roster, and it knows who is a free agent in your league. Okay. Um, so if you scroll down a little bit more, you see quarterbacks here. So the guys highlighted, sorry, the guys highlighted in um, green are the ones you own, and then the guys not highlighted are available for agents. So if if you go to like running back, it'll probably be a bit uh, more instructive to look at. It's just and it's a super flex league here. There's not many quarterbacks available. Okay. All right. So these are all your guys. Then so it looks like yeah, like there's no one left in this league. It was what like a 23 round draft. So like the yeah. the top player available is like Amir Abdullah, Matt Breda, Justice Hill. Um, I mean, these are guys that really at this point with our league, do we have it? How many play? Because we drafted 23 players with 12 yes. owners. Yeah. And that's a lot of players. That there's still guys that really more than likely will only make an impact if there's an injury. Exactly. Exactly. But I mean, it's, so if you scroll back up again, you can see all these different columns that you can sort okay. by. Um, so the first one, draft sharks, week one projection, self-explanatory. That's what we, we think this guy's going to score the coming week. Um, that's the ceiling projection, which again is not done for week one yet. It will be by Monday consensus. ROS is rest of season. 
So we do projections, how many points per game we think this guy's going to score from now to the end of the year. Okay. So you can sort by that. So basically, if you're looking, if you're on this page and you're looking for someone to just start for you this coming week, you'd want to look at the week one projection or, you know, week whatever it is. If you're more looking for a guy that to, you know, have the rest of the, the season, who's going to give you the most value over the rest of the season, that's when you'd want to sort by the ROS, the, the rest of season projection. All right, so basically I need a running back this week. It's telling me Deion Jackson is yep. the guy that you want to keep an eye on the most. And then if yep. we're talking about uh, rest of the season, and yep. click that, then it's Amir Abdullah. Yeah, good Good luck with Amir Abdullah the rest of the season. There's, yeah. There's not much else at running back in this league. Yeah. Um, so then you, yeah, you also – yeah. Uh, you see the bye week on this page, which can be helpful. And then those last two columns are – the players next to opponents okay. and how they fare in terms of um, how sh how good they are against that position as, as a defense. Um, the matchups highlighted in green mean it's a positive matchup, and the and the ones highlighted in red are a you know negative matchup. So that you know that can be useful too as you're you know looking to make your waiver wire decisions. Okay. So this, again, this is telling me that if I'm gonna if I'm interested in Justice Hill. You're definitely better off using them against Houston than Cincinnati. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Next. Uh, what do you want to do next? You want to do the trade value charts? That's sure. Right. Let's do that. Um, those are cool. Um, so back to the very top of the page. I believe it's under. It's either under tools or Intel. I should know, but I. It's uh, there. You go. So bottom, bottom left there, trade value charts. So again, these are based on those DMVP values that we talked about. Um, so again, they're they're you know factoring in 17 different variables to you know come up with a, a a value for each player, and then we have all different types of um, leagues you can look at. So you know now you you see there's dynasty. If you scroll back up a little bit more, there's uh, yep. So there's dynasty, there's startup draft picks, and there's redraft. So that's kind of the, the first thing you want to. Uh, make sure you have right is what type of league you're in. Um, so if, if you like go back to so this is so this is future. first year league, first yeah. year one year leagues. This is uh, no the st uh, startup draft picks are first year of a dynasty league. So first year of a dynasty. Okay. Yeah. So what we just did in our new league. Um, but yeah, if you go That's back right, to either dynasty, dynasty or redraft, okay. just to get back to the play so now. redraft right. is for next year. Redraft is a league that you it, it just it's just one year you re, redraft every. A, it's a redraft league. So no, Got it. Yeah. So okay. no no keepers. Got it. Um, All right. Yeah. So if you if you like click on redraft just to show you how how what this page looks like is term, in terms of players. Um, so like if you're in a redraft league and now let's say you are you know really strong at running back but not so good at wide receiver and let's say you have Nick Chubb and you want to trade him away. You know, we're saying Nick Chubb in a full PPR league, and again, you can change the scoring system up there, is worth 70 points. So, you know, in return for Nick Chubb, if you're looking for a wide receiver, you're looking, you know, in the Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown type of range. If you're looking So we're just to trying to match up the trade. points. Yeah. Well, I mean, ideally, if you're making the trade, you'd like to acquire someone that is worth more, right? Like if you could trade Nick Chubb for uh, C.D. Lamb, that, that's a win for your team. But if you had to trade Nick Chubb for, you know, Devontae Adams, that, you know, we'd, we'd consider that a, a pretty fair trade. And the same thing if you want to do a two-for-one deal. Yeah, exactly. You yep, combine the points in, on the two sides. So basically it's just giving, once again, it's giving you an inside because um, you might just think to yourself, this is what I think. Um, and if my opponent doesn't have – this software and I do, then this is where I'm going to be able to say, you know what? No, I, I don't. I, I might have originally thought the, the deal was fair, but now I'm looking at it here and it's telling me maybe not so. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of it's also going to depend, obviously, on, you know, I mean, nothing is 100 percent. You don't just listen to computers. But oh, yeah. the, this is a, this is a, that's why the, the, the term tool is so important because yes. it's a big tool that you use. It's one of several tools, but it's a tool that you use to to help yeah, make I mean, the best decision possible. Exactly, that's our big thing. Like we don't we don't want to run your team for you. We want to give you as much information as we can so that you can you know make the best decisions for your team. Because that's the that's the fun of fantasy football, right? It's running yeah. your own team, making making those decisions. Yep. 
Okay, so that's pretty uh, easy. So again, this would be something that I would be using uh, with my league. Yep. Um, and it's obviously yeah. Dynasty is with... Uh, again, yeah, Dynasty, you see Superflex, and our league is a Superflex, so you'd want to be using that. Yeah, so this would be us, um, Dynasty, and Superflex. Superflex, yep. Okay. And then you, you make sure you get the scoring system right, which we are. So this is actually team. something, uh, yeah, so this is how you guys would be looking at with some of the trades that you might have made during the draft. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we do next? Oh, well, we had, uh, where's, what's injury predictor? Oh, yeah. Um, so, again, that's either under tools or intel um, right there. So injury predictor. Yep. And by the way, I must, was, um, I must let everybody know that this is how I was introduced up. to Draft Sharks. Cool. So yeah, so we have, um, as far as I know, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I can say it's like the most robust NFL injury database that exists. You know, we have, I, I forget the number, something like you know, like fifty thousand player injuries in this database. It even goes back to, to college for a lot of guys. Um, so, I mean, for starters, that that's valuable. If you So if you click show history next to any of these players, that's going to pop open a little screen. Show history. Yeah, I'm like so like, like right next to Josh Allen. Oh. There's a show, yeah. Okay. Yep. That should pop open. So, and then if you scroll down, um, this is his injury history yep. right there. You know, all the documented injuries shows, you know, where they were on his body, all that stuff. So that, that's the first part of this, which can be useful, right? If you're just, if you're just curious about, you know, how many injuries, the big thing, the big one for me is concussions. I like to know how many concussions a player has, has sure. suffered because, you know, there's a higher risk and they tend to miss more time if they've had, you know, multiple concussions. Um, but, you know, anything you want to find out about injury history, it's going to be here. Um, then the really cool thing we can do with this is, and this, this stuff is, <laughs> Beyond my pay, pay grade, I don't actually, um, you know, build the algorithm and the model that fuels all this. But you know, based on injury histories and just you know trends and you know how how things have worked in the past as far as you know who's gotten hurt, how long they've missed. Based on all that stuff, you know, we can feed it into you know some supercomputer and it spits out these numbers for us that tell us. So these are the things we predict. If you go to the very top again, so we predict probability of injury during the season. So that's a probability the guy's going to miss at least two quarters. So, you know, we say Josh Allen has a 13% chance this, this year to miss at least three quarters or at least two quarters. The next column is projected games missed. So we project Josh Allen to, you know, basically miss half a game. These projected games missed numbers, by the way, are baked into our projections. So, like, if you were to go back to the projections page and go to, like, Jalen Hurts, you know, we have him projected basically for two missed games. So, we, you know, our projections have him for 15 games played, and then everything else is, is based on that. So, th those do kind of um, jibe with our actual projections. So, that's how uh, you come and that's, that helps you give your ranking and yep, your exactly. points, these, total points and yep, average out. Definitely, yep, these definitely impact the rankings. Um, probability of injury per game, pretty – self-explanatory you know what's the chances this guy is going to get hurt in any given game and then dur durability score is basically just how well a guy tends to play and produce through injuries so if you know if josh allen is banged up but he's going to play um you know that kind of helps you compare him to you know someone like jalen hurts like our numbers say jalen hurts performs better while hurt than someone like josh allen does okay so again just a lot of some more information for you to consider as you're you know making draft picks or trades or whatever it is yeah because what's really interesting is that i think immediately some people might get the impression that it says injury predictor now you are predicting based on your averages but yep. i've always found it just as useful believe it or not if not more useful to get the history of the player's injury because again, just like you said, so you're not you're you're not running our draft for us. Yep. I'm being able to look at the injury myself, history, and use that and say because I, I matter of fact, I I think I was talking Green Bay football with one of my analysts uh, a week ago, a week or so ago. And we were talking about Rashawn Gary, and he you know he's coming off the ACL, I believe, and yep. I could just I was saying you know there was something about 
the way he started his career that I just don't remember. I know, I don't know if it was an injury or I don't know if he just had a really hard time because he was being miscast as far as whether he was going to be playing on the defensive line or at linebacker, you know, it was three, four edge, whatever. And so I even popped up while I was talking to him, I popped it up the um, injury predictor page. And sure enough, it said he missed like maybe a game or two early on in his career. So it was not injury. Yep. And boom, there it was. Okay, yeah, it was not injury. It was the fact that he was having a hard time um, going from one position to another yeah. position or one scheme to another scheme. So, yeah, that's definitely yeah, yeah super, that's super useful. useful. And, and like, like and just, and just one more point with injury predictors. I know a lot of people like don't believe in it, and we yes. are definitely not saying we're not saying that like Jalen Hurts is gonna miss two. Yeah, games. it's you know like it's that's what's most likely. And if 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 by using this, we can be just a tiny bit more accurate than someone who's just taking wild guesses at injury risk, like that, that's another advantage that we have over our competition. So that, that's what it is. It's not that we, we're going to predict this stuff anywhere close to 100% accuracy, but if we can just be a, a bit more. You're, you're okay there, Jared? You're coming in and out a little bit. You're okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm here. Right. If you're there. Yep. All right, so we're taking a look now at the league that we – the draft uh, for our first dynasty league. And um, is there a way to lower all this? I don't think so, unfortunately. Okay. That's one thing I don't so, like about Sleeper, but yeah. Anyway, just so everybody can see uh, see how, how, how we ran our league, even though I think we're – I'm going to scroll over to the right to see the rest of the league, too. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is because, yeah. I don't think it's because I've got the other stuff on here. Let me not go no, that, that's just what this page looks like. Okay. There is, I thought there was a way to see the whole draft board, but I don't know off the top of my head. All right. So, now here's something that's interesting, and that is, we and and you might be doing this for the first time as well if you're into dynasty and you've just the first time you're, you're doing it or maybe you, it's just a new rule uh that you've never heard before but w we had the um decision regarding waivers on what to do whether we were just gonna do it like the way it's been done since the beginning of time whoever's <laughs> got the worst points and record that particular week they get the first pick just like the nfl does but there's this you know new idea that's i don't know how long it's been around maybe a couple of years uh where now you can enter in a, a financial part of this so explain what our new system is like regarding because again i've never done it before myself so this is all going to be new, new for me yeah so it's called a um fa fab uh, waiver system, F-A-A-B. It's free agent auction budget, I believe that stands for. Um, but basically every team gets a set number of, you know, fake dollars to use throughout the season to acquire guys off the waiver wire. So I think, I think ours is, is it a thousand, you know, auction dollars we get, um, for the season, whatever it is though. Yeah. So whatever it is. So, at, you know, after the conclusion of every week, so, you know, on, Monday night, Tuesday morning, you can start bidding on free agents. So let's just see well, who is it. Um, you know, Justice Hill is available in our league. J.K. Dobbins, God forbid, goes down in week one because I, I love J.K. Dobbins this year. I hope he doesn't go down in week one. But if he did, you know, Justice Hill would be a hot waiver wire commodity. So everyone in the league would decide how much of their $1,000 they're willing to bid on Justice Hill. And then that player does not have – a dollar value to him. This is just, hey, if if I bid a dollar and no one else bids anything, he's mine. Yep, exactly. If you want to bid a thousand dollars, you're to make you know, sure you get them. Yeah, exactly. So it's just, it's just, it's it's a more strategic way to do the waiver wire, which is, I think, why it's becoming more popular. Okay, so over the years uh, that you've been doing it, what's what's been your strategy? What what or what strategies have you seen out there that has worked yep. or it seems to work better? I tend to be aggressive in using my budget early on in the season. 
Um, I just trust my ability to be able to kind of pinpoint who the difference makers are going to be right away. And the reason yeah. I like being aggressive early is that if I pick up a player in week two and he, he hits, you know, he delivers, he's a, a fantasy starter for me. I'm getting him for almost the entire season. True. So the advantage I'm gaining is better than if I pick someone up in week 10 that hits. Cause then I'm only getting him for, you know, five or six weeks. So I, I, I tend to be aggressive. If I see someone out there that I think is going to be a difference maker, I'm going to, you know, bid enough where I'm, I'm pretty confident I'm going to get him. And have you, and again, I know, I don't know if it, uh, it's something that you can uh, quantify in any way, shape or form, but is there, again, have you uh, figured that that's the better approach or do you see other people yeah. that have been less aggressive and it's worked for them? There's definitely people that you're going to find people that are less aggressive. Right? Sure. That's what, make, that's what makes it interesting. You can kind of, and listen, that, that could work too. Cause sometimes you're going to spend 80% of your budget on a hot running back and he's not going to work out. And that's obviously an issue. I mean, it's, you're not going to hit on all of these, but I, I do think in the long run being more aggressive early is generally the way to go. You just, you just got to be careful and you know, hopefully you're, you're making the right decisions as far sure. as who to target oh, yeah. on the waiver wire. Yeah. And again, what's the, we have to understand that there's only a certain amount of players in our league, in our free agent pool, right. that you would think would, would would turn out to actually, you know, be an effective player. So yep. in a league like this, average, how many how many free agents do you think are out there that will help a team that can over actually the make an the, impact over the course of the entire season? Yes. Uh, I mean, it's tough to put a number on it, but they, they, they will definitely be out there. Oh yeah. I mean, to, to me, the, it doesn't look like the, the it, bit, but it always happens. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like it now, but yeah. we know. I mean, we get to week three, and the NFL is going to look much different than we think it yeah. looks right now. And like, it's going to be like, wow, and how just did that guy. I should. Yeah, oh, wow, how did exactly. I not draft that guy? Yeah. And just and just in general, I do think it's best to focus on running back in on the waiver wire. Just because those guys have the biggest potential to, to be difference makers, right? Because a lot of them all it takes is one. Come from nowhere. Like Warren from Pittsburgh. There. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Taxi squad. Now we have a taxi squad of three. Yep. And taxi squad has been out there. So the way ours is run, how does it work? Um, because, again, this is something that might be uh, just like for me. This could be first time uh, for me and, and others out there. Yeah. Yeah. Taxi squad, just think of it like a, you know, like a, a farm system in baseball, right? It's like, you know, you know, your developmental team, these guys, um, they're the guys that you don't think you're going to help you this coming season, but you, you want to stash them for their future value. So, you know, a lot of times it's, it's almost always young players. It's often rookies. Um, you know, it could be injured players, although I, I think we all, I think we have, do we have IR spots? Yeah, we do. I can't even remember. Yeah. I think we have okay, three yeah. maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you're going to put your injured guys on IR and you're going to put your, you know, rookies that are probably aren't going to get a lot of playing time this year on your taxi squad. Guys in your taxi squad cannot obviously be placed in your starting lineup for a week's game. If you wanted to use them in your starting lineup, you'd have to, you know, promote them from the taxi squad. And they squad can never go back. Drop. They can never go back is usually the rule. I think that's how it's set up in our league. And that's, that's the, that's the trick say, is that that's yep. why it's different from a bench. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, all right. So that makes more sense. And um, anything else that you think that uh, that f for startup like like ours and anybody else out there that might be starting up like this that yeah. might have a question as they go from the draft to opening day. Yeah, we have an entire um, section on draft sharks dedicated to like dynasty strategy. Okay. Um, so maybe we can maybe we can link to that in this video so pe sure. people can go check that out. We also have a section dedicated to Superflex strategy, which is what this league is. And if you're not familiar, Superflex just means there's a flex spot that you can use a quarterback in. And obviously, quarterbacks tend to score the most fantasy points, so you you pretty much want to be using a quarterback in that flex spot. So Superflex leagues are basically leagues that you. They're, they're two quarterback leagues. You want to be starting two quarterbacks. Um, and that's why if you go back to our draft results, you'll see how um, you know quickly the, the quarterbacks flew off the board because of that setting. 
Yeah, the, but I and I do have to ask. So because well, well you know, even even though we're just seeing, see, obviously, look, uh, that's uh, all the quarterbacks in red. So yep. all right, so look at you. But here's because here's the thing is that I noticed even though we have a two quarterback league that picking up three quarterbacks was important even though you can only start two it just seemed to be and is that just because it's hey it could be an injury um or it could just be that that third quarterback was you had two veterans yeah. and you needed a young guy or you had one veteran or you had two young guys and you needed a veteran yeah i mean there, i mean this is a um there's a lot of answers to that question and we could you know, probably talk for an hour on like dynasty sure. strategy and super flex strategy um the one, the one thing i've learned from doing super flex dynasty leagues for you know probably like five or so years now is just quarterbacks are just worth so much like because because i mean because there, there's only 32 of them right in any given week there's only 32 starters a lot of times there's you know fewer than that in terms of guys that you'd actually want to use in your starting lineup so i mean one reason to draft three is that it's nice to have three so you can you know play matchups if one guy gets hurt you have a guy that to fill in um and the second reason to draft three is just for trade capital right like 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 for me well i mean there's a couple reasons i took cj stroud in the fourth as my third quarterback the first is that kyler murray obviously isn't going to play yes early on that makes a lot of sense season yeah but the other reason i took stroud there just simply, I thought he was the most valuable player still on the board, which a lot of times for me in dynasty startups, I'm really not that worried about filling out my starting roster. I'm just worried about accumulating as much value the best as I can. possible. Yeah. Cause I, cause I know I can always trade. I mean, trading is so big in dynasty. You can trade during the season in the off season. Um, so to me, Stroud is, you know, maybe I'll end up keeping him. Maybe I'll end up trading him for, you know, help at another position. Okay, so as far and you mentioned trades, so it's and and I know we were having a little bit of an issue with making sure with the messaging that everybody was getting the message, but it's it's very important because uh, I know this goes on in my league, the one I've been doing for I don't know fifteen years or something, but we've had turnover, and the more you have turnover in a league like that, you know the the more you don't tend to know some people like you did when when it first started. But it's mm -hmm. just you get sometimes where you send requests of trades to people and they don't even answer you back. And that's something that's very important because just think of it, especially in Dynasty, just think of it just like you would think of it in the regular NFL. There's no way a general manager is going to diss another one or if they do, they're not going to be looked upon very well. And then who's going to want to trade with that guy and who's going to want to be friends with that guy. So the more you can be friendly and Hey, yep. you know what? Not interested. You don't even have to explain, but if you want to fine, you know, if you want to give your side of the story of reason or great offer, but just, you know, whatever that's, that's important is to be respectful. Um, because oh, yeah. you don't want to be in a situation where all of a sudden you need to make a trade and you've got five people that you didn't respond to and they're the ones that have the best uh, talent that you need. Well, they're going to say, screw you. I'm not going to go back to you. You're, you're t that's totally right. Like, you know, fo fostering relationships is important in dynasty leagues. We actually, there's actually a section in our uh, strategy guide about just that and how important it is when you, you know, start to get into trading. Um, so I, I, yeah, I think the issue a lot of times is people aren't familiar with the, site they're on right i think like some people are probably new to sleeper in our league and just weren't aware that trade offers yes. were being made to them so that, well we'll get that ironed out i think yeah um, so that, i think so, everyone yeah. in this league is going to be active exactly so just always make sure that once you are all in communication with everybody that you always respond to somebody's trade request because it's not like you're getting them every day so you know you get an email or probably if you're lucky or, or unlucky you probably get one every few weeks i would guess you know so <laughs> yeah. you can at least respond to them you know yep, sure. all right well now let's go back uh no wait where were we yeah let's go back to the because you we wanted to what was the other one you wanted to do here we were going back here oh i think we were just talking about like the strategy guides right oh yes okay so where's that um so if you go go to advice on the very top yep and then click that uh what well, you can click the DSU or you can just go to like dynasty strategies on the left there. Yep. So we have, so this is our dynasty strategy page. We have a 
Dynasty Basics. If you see on the, the left side is like the um, kind of the, the menu of what everything is. Um, so Dynasty Basics, that's just kind of you know, intro to Dynasty. What is it? How does it work? Um, and then we have a strategy page and then a page for all the Dynasty tools that we offer. So, yeah, I, I mean, I would definitely give this a read. This kind of like um, you know, set, sets the table for our philosophy and how we attack Dynasty Leagues. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing that I also find really useful uh, right here. Oh, yeah. So the shark bites, this is sort of like what you would want every day. It's like your morning newspaper. Exactly. This is the news. But then, you know, I think more importantly, it's the news, but then it's our fantasy spin on it. So, you know, what does it what does it mean for your fantasy team? Yeah. So there's a projections. You can just find that out after and you get into a whole another page and outlook on a particular player that has news uh, that week. Yeah. So that's that's very it's like it's almost like something yeah. you can't not have because you can sure you can rely on because if you have joshua kelly this is going to go on your page exactly yeah exactly. if you're synced yeah. up so yep. yeah but you still want to know what else is going on not just with players on your team especially if you're thinking about the waiver wire yeah. or making trades yeah and yeah, there, there's obviously you can find news anywhere um but i, I think that the fantasy spin we put on it um, is, is what makes this page so valuable. Well, absolutely. And and not just that, is that, yeah, you can find the news, but sometimes it's about, well, I, I got to go to two or three different sites to find the news to make sure I get enough on this and this and this. Here, you know you're not going to miss out on anything because that's basically what you're doing. You're getting all the news from everywhere and putting it on one page. Exactly. So no, nobody's going to get yep. by. So, all right. So I'm sure, like you just said a few seconds ago, we could probably go on forever. Yeah. Yep. Um, but uh, we uh, just can't do that. Um, by the way, did, I, I, was, I noticed you had an article that just came out that you had the fantasy football MVP. So what is that? So is that your MVP prediction for this year? Uh, it's you know, it's kind of like who just who we think is going to be the most valuable player. Who you think is going to be? If, if that, Factoring in, like, you know, how many points they're going to score and where they're drafted. I mean, I think you know, everyone would say Justin Jefferson's probably going to score the most points, but, you know, you also have pick, you know. So. I, went with, uh, I went with Tony Pollard, my fantasy MVP. Tony Pollard? Tony Pollard. Wow. I think he's, I think he's in for a big year. He, okay. He's been, uh, anytime he's gotten a significant workload, which, you know, has only been 10 or so games because he's, been sharing the backfield with uh, Zeke Elliott. Anytime Pollard's got a significant workload, he's he's put up a lot of fantasy points. So I think he's I think he's in for a, a big season. And Tony Pollard is on Jan Jan's team. Jan Levine. So yeah, I'll let Jan late. know. That was yeah, that was late. I'm sure I'm sure I would have taken him um, right after Jan, that. I would I would have taken him over Pitts. Yep. So I'll I'll tell Jan you stole Tony Pollard. <laughs> that was what round five i believe round yep, five, yeah round five yep. okay so we again jared will be on uh door and, and and we'll because we're starting thursday so yeah. it's here already uh but yep. jan will be on uh several times throughout the season uh and uh so uh not just that but we're also as we said in the beginning we're going to be able to get on other because i'm i'm pretty sure that 100 percent of our guests are going to be associated with our own dynasty league. And that's more than enough, um, uh, experienced minds, especially the ones associated with draft sharks. Um, and then uh, throw in, uh, some of the guys that I brought into the league that, uh, have expertise with their specific teams or specific, uh, industries as well. So should be a lot of fun. And uh, how often do you do your own show? Cause obviously we're going to have a link in the description, uh, for your specific page. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have um, three podcasts, you, you know, YouTube videos per week. We're going to do a waiver wire show every Tuesday. We'll do a weekly preview show every Thursday and then a DFS show looking at uh, both DraftKings and FanDuel every Friday. All right. So is that three? Three a week. Yep. Three a week. Okay. Uh, this is it. 
Only a few more days to go, six more to be exact, and then we kick off the season. So everybody's excited. Jared, appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk, of course, uh, sometime soon. Yeah, good luck uh, in your draft, and good luck to everyone watching in their remaining drafts. Absolutely. It's going to be a big Saturday, right? Is this the biggest oh, weekend yeah. of the year? I believe this is the biggest draft weekend of the year, yep. Awesome. All right. Well, good luck to everybody, and we will uh, – be back talking fantasy quite soon here on uh, Prime Sports Network.